Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling a problem that looks very complicated at first, but it's actually super simple. So actually, I actually urge you to, if you read this problem and thought, mm, this looks hard, kind of stop this video now, go again and try it as the simplest thing, simplest way possible, okay? But the problem statement, this is around dynamics, this is around um, acceleration, velocity, those very basic concepts. And we're going to use the same uh, basic principles we've used in all the videos that are linked here in the channel. It's a whole playlist of them, so nothing new here, nothing special. Again, very simple problem, okay? Um, problem statement reads, An airplane begins its takeoff run at A with zero velocity and a constant acceleration a. Knowing that it becomes airborne 30 seconds later at B and that the distance AB is 900 meters, determine the acceleration A and the takeoff velocity VB. So specifically, we are to determine the acceleration A and the takeoff velocity VB, VB meaning velocity at B, right? So velocity when it is at B. So when we first analyze this problem, we might think, you know, okay, we need to evaluate, you know, take off of the plane. Do I need to look at forces? Do I need to think about, well, what's the the, um, the force pushing it downwards and then the normal, but the normal needs to be equal to it for it to stay on the ground, but then you need to increase the normal force to be able to, for it to take off. We need lift as well. Nothing, nothing like that. No, really no, no um, complications of that matter. Really what we're trying to see is there's a plane. It's going from point A to point B. It could very well be a car. It could very well be a motorcycle someone running, I don't know, but it's just as simple as that. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. What we have is, um, it starts with zero velocity. This is super relevant, right? So that means that at, at time equals zero, my velocity, which is my V naught, equals zero meters per second, right? Um, another very important piece of information. It's a constant acceleration of lowercase a. What does that mean? It means, and this is super relevant, it means that the acceleration is not, not a function of time. It's going to be a single value. It's not going to change regardless of how much time elapses, regardless of the velocity, regardless of any other thing. A stays the same. It's a constant, right? So it's not, not a function of time. Um, it becomes airborne in 30 seconds, uh, B. So th it takes 30 seconds from it to go from A to B with this constant velocity and leaving at zero, right? So what do we know? We know that at time equals 30 seconds, x equals xb, and well, v equals vb, and is one of the things that we're trying to find out, right? And last but not least, we know that xb minus xa is 900. So the distance from a to b is 900 meters. Okay, so with that, we can go and apply again, once again, right, the very basic principles. Velocity is simply the rate at which the distance changes with time. And acceleration is just the rate at which velocity changes with time. Okay, we're going to start and we're going to use only these two concepts. Once again, if you thought this was hard, pause the video now, solve it on your own. I'm sure you'll be able to get it. Okay, but if we're going to solve this, we're going to do it from scratch. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to start with this um, idea here. And we're going to go ahead and integrate this. Okay, so here we're really doing the, you know, derivation or the proof of the equation we're going to about to use. Here, with this relationship, we can now integrate, right? We integrate and it's from t, from t is zero, from time zero, before this plane starts to move all the way to a time t. And here we're going to integrate from v naught, which is a velocity when time is zero, all the way to a velocity v. Okay, and then what comes out of this derivative? And note, this is very important. Note that this a is going to come out of the derivative because it's a constant, and only because it's a constant. If it were not a constant, it could, we could not do this. We're going to have that a t equals v minus v naught. Right? A t equals v minus v naught, and that is. Um, Simple yet powerful. Okay, this is an equation we can use whenever our acceleration is constant. All right, cool. I want to leave that for now. 
And here, on this one here, I'm going to use this one to um, to be able to come up with a variation for that one so I can keep going. And here what I see is, note that V is just the rate at which the position changes with time. So I could send that, substitute that V by the rate at which the position changes with time because it's the same thing, right? It's literally the same thing. And I'm going to do that, right? So here, what I'll do is, let's change colors. I'm going to say now, okay, acceleration times t equals the rate at which the position changes with time minus v naught. And therefore, the x equals a t plus v naught times dt. I'm going to put dt on both of them already. dt plus v naught dt. Right, and what that allows us to do is integrate it once again. And here I'm going to go from x naught to x, or if we want, because we know x naught is a, x a to x b. And here we're going to integrate from zero to t again, because x a, because we know that at zero x is a, right? <clears throat> and at t, this is going to be under thirty seconds in just a moment. Um, we get, end up in x b. Okay, and if we want to do it for any x, we can do it like so, right? It doesn't have to be x b. Um, and here, same thing, from 0 to t. So what we get out of this is that the delta x, the change in position, will be equal to the integral of this, which is t squared over 2, a t squared over 2, plus v naught t, right? And we just came to the fundamental position equation when we have a uniform acceleration, right? So uniform acceleration equation um, right there. That's how it comes to be. It's very simple, two simple integrations, right? But now, what that allows us to do is, okay, now I want to place my boundary conditions, the ones that I know, to be able to simplify this. First boundary condition is that um, V0 is zero, right? So this becomes delta x equals at squared over two, and that's it, or V0 goes away. Next thing, that's next boundary condition that I know is that at time equals 30 seconds, at the distance traveled is 900 meters, right? So that allows me to do, okay, so that means that 900, oops, 900 equals the acceleration, which I'm after, uh, times 30 squared divided by 2. And that allows me to say, okay, so therefore, therefore, in my acceleration, one of the things I'm looking for is simply 900 times 2 divided by 30 squared, which, by the way, is 30 times 30, obviously. And then that means that I don't even need a calculator here. I could 0, 0, 0, 0, then 93, this becomes 3, 3, 3, that goes away, and I'm left with 2. So this equals acceleration equals 2 meters per second squared. And boom, that's one of our answers right there. Okay, so as simple as that, that's one of our answers. This plane is leaving from rest, and it has an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Now, next bit of the question is, what is velocity at B? Right, so what is the velocity at B? And that's also very simple, because if you recall, we found before integrating the second time a relationship between the acceleration and the velocity. And if we use this, I can find out what the velocity is, which is exactly what we're trying to do here. Right? So note that we have here a relationship between acceleration, time, and velocity. And I'm after the velocity. So the velocity at any given point will be the acceleration times the time plus the initial velocity. In our case here, the initial velocity is zero. So this goes away to zero. And we want to know what is the velocity what is the velocity at, let's do this, at time equals 30 seconds, the velocity equals what? Well, the velocity at time 30 seconds is going to be the acceleration, which is 2. We just find out, found out it's 2, and we know it's a constant. It's not changing. Times 30. As simple as that. And that gives us 60, and that will be our answer. And then just to final check, what is the um, unit here? Well, the unit is going to be the meters per second squared from the acceleration times the second from the 30 seconds, which means that my seconds go away, and I'm left with meters per second, which is 
a unit for velocity or a unit for velocity. <clears throat> okay, so this is my answer for the second part. So again, this problem, you know, if you're thinking way ahead and you're trying to think about forces and free body diagrams, this could be daunting, but it's not. It's a really, really simple problem. It could be, like I said, like a car, it could be a bicycle, it could be anything. It's just simple, uniform acceleration. Okay, so velocity changes um, by two seconds every single time. It's zero, then it's two, then it's four, then it's six, then it's eight, and so on and so forth. All right? And we know the velocity is 60 after it runs the um, the 900 meters, which is up to the 30 seconds. So I hope this was useful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below, as per usual. If the video was useful, consider giving this video a like, and we'll talk soon.